Hello, Thomas. Oh, Hi. Hello. Uh, I've just listened to the album. I was lucky enough to run through it before the interview. And uh, well, I enjoyed it. But my question to you is, what were your feelings when you first listened to it from start to finish when it was done? It's the same thing with every album. Uh, you work with it for years and years, and you are so mm -hmm. into it. That You know, it's really hard to give an objective opinion about it. And when I listened to it through after the mastering, I just felt empty. Uh -huh. I thought, yeah, this is exactly how I wanted it to sound, but I just don't get the kick out of it now. And I haven't listened to it since, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a few months and then try again. Okay, so you're not listening to it on the plane while flying from one? <laughs> no, I've... <laughs> not ready yet. I have had my fair share of the mm -hmm. songs for a while now, mm -hmm. but I feel really encouraged and positive about the result. And the people who have heard it, man, they seem to be really happy about it. The other band members are really thrilled about it, so that's a really good sign. And I think I'm gonna be positively surprised when I listen to it okay. in a while. Uh, what kind of feelings do you hope that fans will get after the first listen? Well, it's quite a package. It's 75 minutes mm -hmm. and the moods change from song to song all the time. I think it's probably the most theatrical piece that we have done so far. It's very soundtrackish. There's a lot of orchestra and uh, like this film type of mood going on. Well, which is only natural since we're doing a movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would assume that this takes a lot of listens because it's so, so big and diverse. And uh, the most common response that I've gotten from people who have heard it is that it sounds really good, I need to listen to it like 10 times more. And that's basically the best and the most natural reaction that you can give. Mm -hmm. I see, well, of course there are some songs that in the middle of the song it changes completely, so surely it takes a long time, it's, just, it's not just 13 tracks, it's much more listening. Well, to it's it. sort of an opus, <laughs> but uh, if it at least arouses your interest in listening to it again, oh, okay. then mission accomplished. <laughs> That's a good way of thinking. Yeah. But, uh, do, you, do you think that, well, you are doing a round of interviews now, and we've been talking about this album for a long time. Do you think that Nowadays, there's too much information available on the album. You know, you, know, you gave uh, on the website uh, a kind of track-by-track track mood description of each song, and uh, you've described the, the album, we could see the album artwork, and uh, there are some early reports now from the pre-listening party and the such. Do you think that with two more months to go, more or less, is there too much available? to the people already? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, you don't have to read it if you don't want to. Okay. <laughs> But basically it's all about building up the hype. And mm -hmm. That's what basically the record label wants. Mm -hmm. And all these quotes about the songs that I had to do, it was just something that uh, they requested for the mm -hmm. listening sessions. And I was like, what the hell am I going to write? I don't want to <laughs> reveal too much. So I just tried to be a bit cryptic and so. But basically, you know how it is. You want to build up the tension and build up the hype, and then when the album is released, you know, that's the climax. Yeah, I see. Because <laughs> last time I, I interviewed you, it was for Dark Pressure Play, and back then we couldn't talk about it before the album release, or, well, five days before the album release or the such. So, and nowadays, well, there was a, much, a lot of mystery surrounding Dark Passion Play, whereas now there is so much information available for this album. Well, of course the people still need to listen to the music, so that's, that's the, uh, yeah, the missing part, I guess. Last time we had this issue with the singer, new mm -hmm. singer, we had to keep the secrecy there, so that would really build up the tension there. And uh, also in this era of the internet, digital downloads, YouTube, all that, you have to be extra, extra careful mm -hmm. with the listening sessions and with everything what you want to put out. Mm -hmm because you really don't want it to leave. It's something that you work for, you know, for four years. years and you kind of try to build up to the 
climatic moment of the release. And then if it if it if it's leaked like a month in advance, it really takes the bottom out of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if it's been four years in the making and as such, you yeah. need to be careful. <laughs> yeah. And well, and as you mentioned before, you are making a movie. Everyone knows about the movie and expecting the movie. Is it like a a dream come true for you to to finally make a movie with your music? You've been always fan of soundtracks and you've been working on soundtracks, but this time you've created the soundtrack and the movie all by yourself. Yeah, it's one of those big dreams come true. It sure is. And the thing is that we're not trying to blow Hollywood out of the map or anything. Okay. This is not the thing. We're not trying to break into the movie business. It's just a simple dream that uh, I had about four years ago. And then when I told about this dream to the other members of the band, everybody mm -hmm. was so thrilled. This is exactly what we need to do. Mm -hmm. It would be a really cool twist that nobody's done before in this way as we're mm -hmm. doing it. So. Uh, it's just, it's all about following your instincts and trying to do something new and challenging all the time mm -hmm. with each album. Well, I spoke to Marco a few months ago for Tarot and he told me he had a lot of fun uh, acting on the, for, for the movie and he would consider a movie career sooner, an acting career <laughs> sooner or later. So was there, did, did you enjoy acting or yourself? I thought it was a wonderful experience to see that world, but I don't think it's really my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't feel really comfortable in front of the cameras and I actually told the director from the beginning that please don't put us into the movie, at least not too much. Okay. But then he insisted, since this is a Nightwish movie, mm -hmm. that you need to appear somehow in the movie. So uh, then he wrote these two scenes where we're playing as a band, the other one is in a jazz club and the other one is in this ghost circus thing and that was okay actually because we were behind our instruments and we were performing as a okay. band that felt natural mm -hmm. but then again he wrote this small cameo part for me mm -hmm. well i don't have to say any lines there's no dialogue but i still have to act a little bit so that was quite a challenge mm -hmm. so, so you were the most camera shy i think all of us were but <laughs> okay i was the only one who had to do something without having the instrument in my hand, so that was a bit weird. <laughs> I see. So, did you, well, were the scenes like good at the first take or the such? You know, it, did you find it so different between acting and being on stage, where lots of people are watching you actually live? It wasn't that different from making a music video, actually. Yeah. You know, you were just You've on been stage, in music videos. <laughs> action, and you go play back and then you go so it wasn't that different mm -hmm. I see and if when the movie will be released like in May 2012 or something like that uh, if someone had, could only buy one thing between the the ticket to the movie or the CD or coming to the concert he will be in tour by then what would you suggest just one thing uh. That's such an unfair question. These, I know. These things walk so much hand in hand. And in a way, in a way, um, the movie was the priority in the mm -hmm. beginning because all the songs are written for the movie or for the scenes in the movie. That mm -hmm. was the basics of everything. But we were um, really careful to make the album such so that it would work as its own individual entity as well. Yeah. So even though if the movie never happened, the album would still make sense to you. And they are not so closely related. I mean, uh, the album is not telling the story of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's just the same thematics about the power of imagination, memories, and uh, the overall love that surrounds us. That's the basic theme of the album and the movie. But uh, other than that, they are not related in any way. They're quite different. Yeah. And what about the live part? Well, the, the concert part yeah, of the your life. Yeah, the starts in uh, <laughs> January the 21st. It's going to be the first show in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be followed by this Caribbean cruise thing where we're playing oh, yeah. shows, the 70,000 tons of metal. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just 
swimming in the pool with a pina colada in my hand, watching Cannibal Corpse and the Morpheus Stratovarius play. That's gonna be something else. And that's gonna be followed by the European tour mm -hmm. before, yeah. the, before the summer festival season. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll be doing summer festivals too. That's the idea. So you, you'd be busy all through 2012. The idea is to play do, live. Do about a year's worth of shows from mm -hmm. January to January, something like that. We're going to take it a bit easier because the previous tour was maybe just a tad too much. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't really worth it because people started to drop like flies at some point mm -hmm. from within the band and from outside the band, the technical crew, all that. So uh, we just thought that uh, maybe we can do it a bit easier this time. Still going to cover all the continents and do a hell of a tour, but not quite in that scale. Yeah. I remember I, I saw you twice on the same tour. You were touring and touring. But, uh, so did did you have a good time at least after people really, dropping yeah, by? Yeah, I don't want to bash the tour in any way. It was a wonderful time and everybody did a fantastic job. And, you know, I'm really proud about the band that we survived it. But at some point it just felt that this is not worth it. Mm -hmm. it oh, well. Not so, uh, but there were some really, really good times there. Well, I'm sure that the 70,000 tons of metal will be a good way to start off the year playing, I, I guess. it's going to be pretty <laughs> relaxed under the Caribbean sun. Yeah, are you playing one or two sets? Don't you know already? Two because, sets. yeah, most bands, I wish I, I could go there, but well, it's a bit far away from Italy. So I will be seeing you here in Italy. Okay. Quite a different setting. So finally, could you just invite people to the, to the show in Italy, saying, well, see you there? Or, yeah, we're gonna have one hell of a show in Milan, Italy. I think it's somewhere in April 2012. I can't remember the exact date, sorry to say. But I really hope to see you all there. It's gonna be the biggest show we ever had in Italy mm -hmm. so far. So, see you all there.